Okay, in the next few videos, we're going to talk about the periodic table. So to begin, let's talk about how the periodic table is organized. So first of all, of course, you've recognized just by looking at periodic tables that the elements are organized by atomic numbers. That on the top left, you've got hydrogen with an atomic number of one. And as you work your way from left to right, and from top to bottom along the periodic table, the atomic number increases. However, there is more organization than that. Because of course, if you're just going to rank by atomic number, you could just have one giant column, all right? So the other way that the periodic table is organized is by recurring patterns of chemical properties. And this you've seen before, you know, hearing terms such as the noble gases, the alkali metals, the halogens, and so forth. And all of these trends and patterns we can see in the different groups or columns in the periodic table. And that's because elements in the same column or group, they have the same number of valence electrons. And valence electrons are very important because they're the electrons that participate in chemical bonds and chemical reactions. So if these elements have the same number of valence electrons, then they will tend to have the same chemical reactivity. And this is actually really helpful to keep in mind for the MCAT because often if they have a question asking which of the following elements could be substituted for this element or which of the following elements would have a similar property as this element, the answer is almost always going to be whatever element is also in the same column. All right. So now let's look at the different groups in more detail. One note about this, there are a whole bunch of different groups on the periodic table, basically one group per column on the periodic table. The good thing is that you don't need to know all of them for the MCAT. The only ones you need to know are the ones that I've included on this whiteboard right here. So our first group is the noble gases. The noble gases are in the far right of the periodic table, so in the last column. This includes helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. And the noble gases, there are a few key properties about them that you'll want to know. First of all, they're the only elements with a full valence shell. And because they have a full valence shell, they are very, very stable. So they have low chemical reactivity, which is why we often say that the noble gases are inert. And also because the fact that they're so stable and everything in the world is trying to become more stable, we'll often see that the way that different atoms and compounds react is essentially to attain noble gas configuration, a full valence shell. Now, in terms of the physical properties for noble gases, they are monatomic, which means they exist naturally as individual atoms. They don't exist in diatomic states, for instance, bound to another copy of itself. They also exist in the gas phase at standard conditions, which again makes sense because we are calling them the noble gases. But one implication of the fact that they exist as gases in the standard conditions implies that they must have very weak intermolecular forces, and that indeed is the case. Okay, so let's take a look at our next group, the halogens. The halogens is just one column to the left of the noble gases, or the second uh, to last column on the periodic table. This includes fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine, and these elements are very, very reactive. And the reason why they're very reactive is because the halogens have seven valence electrons. They're super close to a valence shell. They just have to gain one more electron to attain noble gas configuration. And that's another general trend on the periodic table. The closer the elements are to noble gas configuration, the more reactive they are. All right. So halogens, in terms of physical properties, they are diatomic elements, which means unlike our noble gases, they exist in pairs. So that means if you're looking at halogens in nature, you're not going to see individual fluorine atoms. You're going to see diatomic fluorine. You're also going to see diatomic chlorine, diatomic bromine, and diatomic iodine. Another difference from noble gases is that our halogens exist in different phases at standard conditions. This means that there are substantial differences in the strengths of their intermolecular forces. And as it turns out, fluorine and chlorine are both gases, bromine is a liquid, and iodine is a solid at standard conditions. 
Okay. Our next group is the oxygen group. The oxygen group is essentially named as being the group containing oxygen. This is the second to last, uh, or sorry, third to last column of the periodic table. So two to the left of noble gases. This includes oxygen, sulfur, selenium, and tellurium. And there's nothing super special about these elements. Basically, they have six valence electrons and they want to gain two more in order to gain noble gas configuration. All right. Our next group are the alkaline metals. These are the elements in the first column of the periodic table. This includes lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, and cesium. And similarly to the halogens, these elements are very, very reactive. And again, that's because they're very close to a noble gas configuration. They have a single valence electron and they easily lose it to, in order to attain noble gas configuration. Now, one thing I do want to mention about alkali metals is you might have noticed when I said that it's the elements in the first column of the periodic table that I didn't include hydrogen in the list. The reason why I don't include hydrogen as an alkali metal is because hydrogen does not have properties of metals. The only thing that hydrogen shares in common with the other elements in the first column of the periodic table is that it has one valence electrons. But if you look at all the other properties of hydrogen, hydrogen behaves like a non-metal. So that's good to keep in mind. Hydrogen is not an alkali metal because it has properties of non-metals. Okay, so now let's look at the last group uh, you're responsible for the MCAT. That's the alkaline earth metals. These elements are the second column of the periodic table and include beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium. These elements, again, aren't super special. They're fairly reactive, but not super reactive. And they tend to lose two electrons to, gain, uh, to attain noble gas configuration.